Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about preparedness. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, is there any way to prepare for being a junior software developer so that those of us who will be entering the industry can hit the ground running? I know that data structures and algorithms won't help in this case. That helps primarily with the interviews, but I can't Build an uh, but I can't in build an entire enterprise uh, enterprise application with millions of lines of code by myself. Well, if I can't, I'd probably be an ex it would be ex if I could it would be an extremely long project. And maintaining that on my own would probably be hell. What's the best way to prepare for this sort of development? Or is it rough? Is it a rough start inevitable? Uh, is a rough start inevitable for a junior software developer? So uh, that's an excellent question, and the short answer is yes. Is yes, uh, it is inevitable. You will not uh, have anything apart uh, unless you are extremely fortunate. And as I said, you I'll talk very shortly on on the things that can give you the best possible start uh, on your career as a software developer. But what it really comes down to, if you're going to get all of those things at the same time, it's like wow. <laughs> then you. You, you have to have a lot of things turn out pretty well for you. But the, in essence, uh, it is impossible for you to prepare for being a professional software developer uh, to the point where you're not facing some type of challenges. And the re reason is very simple, because you can't prepare for what you don't know anything about, for that which is unknown. It's like saying that uh, you could prepare for taking a test on an unknown topic uh, even if I tell you that oh it's going to involve math well that's a lot of stuff it's the same th deal with being a software developer it's the reason why I tell people that if you want the best possible chance of being a long-term software developer and as I like to call your call them a professional grade software developer uh, if you go by, by Bjorn uh, Strostrup's uh, definition, that means knowing f at least five programming languages. I wouldn't go that far, but uh, I'll just give you my take on why he says that. Uh, my take on that is because uh, if you know a single stack and you have you don't have the you have the ability you, where you have the ability to work in a specific stack, but you don't have the ability to transfer those skills to other programming languages. Well, you don't. Then you don't really have the core skills of programming down because you should be able to transfer fairly seamlessly between stacks as you become more senior. But that's the problem, right? When you're looking for your first job, like you have to start somewhere, and you don't know usually what's going to fall in your lap or what opportunities are going to present themselves. So that's why I think it's hilarious that there are these people making videos and content where top five languages learn to learn to get a job, top this, top that bullshit. They don't know shit. They don't know shit about any of this stuff and they have no way of giving you the top five things to learn in order to get a, pro a programming job uh, because the only tip that will ever get you there is the tip that I give away without charging you a goddamn dime for it and that is go to the job postings and look around because that is the only source of information that is credible when it comes to figuring out what stack do you pick and even then it's not a guarantee so what I argue to you is that being prepared as a junior software developer, it really comes down to the same things that you would prepare for whatever you're going to do. An example would be: let's take an analogy and say you're going to go in, uh, you're, you're going to join the army, you're going to get, a, you're going to be a soldier, and it's just as that, it's just as an army, uh, at, just like the army can't train a soldier to, uh, to like be a professional uh, soldier on the, in their first battle like the, all they can do is to teach the trainees the theory of combat make sure their fitness is up and like all of this good stuff and but but they can't put them in in a combat situation and then expect them to just you know handle the situation they have to do a do a better job than that if they want the people to survive and win the battle and all that stuff so the things that matter is the same things pretty much for everybody first and foremost good instructors instructors a solid 
ex uh, education and with training and practice and all that stuff if you're going to be a soldier uh, as an example and then an experienced sergeant or some type of sm a slightly more experienced person to help you out in your first couple of co uh, combat situations or whatever like set set get you hands-on experience by somebody who knows the craft or whatever you're doing right and it's the same thing for us software developers it is the only thing that matters and it's the only thing that's going to dictate how good your start is now the good instructor part that's a little bit tr if you're completely fresh it's a little bit trickier to find a good instructor because that's the thing right you're gonna uh, it's hard to find good instructors and it's hard to find people who are going to give you a really good sense of what it means to be a software developer. It's a little bit, uh, it's not a very streamlined process, I'm going to be completely honest with you there. Uh, so that is tricky, but it can happen and you can make it work and you can also be your own instructor if there are gaps in whoever you're learning from, right? And then solid training, or like you have to practice. You have to practice your fundamentals really, really well. And that's why I tell people: don't try to be an expert. Don't try to become a senior before you even have your first job. It's just stupid. Focus on the core stuff, the stuff that really matters. And as I said before, the best way to figure out what the core stuff, uh, figure out what the core stuff is, is to first and foremost look at the job postings and then you can of course get tips from other professionals ideally people who are not making money from the fact that you're buying their stuff just find a actual software developer there there are tons of them that will just hey yeah this is what we use this is the stuff that i think is important done that's it you don't have to worry because they have nothing to gain from lying to you uh, and then finally experience, an experienced sergeant or in this case a senior uh, co-worker or a, being part of a team or something like that and that's also something that I've uh, told you about before uh, the best possible start for you is to join a company where you get to be a member a junior member in a more experienced team because if you if you get into that role you will be able to get feedback on your code reviews that is very useful hopefully you're going to be able to get tips and tricks and you're going to be able to observe how more experienced the developers handle problems they will act as your rubber duck and your like your your skill level will skyrocket upwards in comparison to anything you could ever do by yourself so what I want you to take away from this is that uh, brace yourself uh, there is no way for you to practice and prepare so that your first job doesn't feel very intimidating and you're not supposed to be able to do that guys it's the same thing with anything that is unknown to all of us and most of most people spend quite a lot of their lives being afraid of something unknown that's coming up ahead and so everybody has their own strategy for dealing with that and I will tell you the only thing that I've ever found to work. And it's, this, it's the same philosophy you might see in people who do martial arts. You train and you practice all the time, trying to get better, stronger, faster, and so forth and so forth. So that if something happens, you have the best possible situation going for you that doesn't mean that you're going to survive any, uh, like a deadly encounter it doesn't mean that somebody can't come and shoot you or you might get hit by a car but you still prepare as if you're going towards some end goal where you're you're uh, you're going to be able to influence the situation with the training that you have and then you trust your training that's that's the leap of faith trust like trust in the skills that you acquire and trust yourself uh, that you will make the right call when the time comes. That's all you can do. Uh, and then accept the fear for what it is. The fear of the unknown is something that you're gonna, everybody has it to a certain degree. Uh, but as I said, you can't really do much about it. And so don't try, don't let it stop you. Because being afraid, I mean, it's just fear. You can choose to ignore it and do things that are scary, even though it doesn't feel great. And I promise you, if you make that a rule and really try to do it as much as you feel is possible you will be surprised at how often you will be able to push through your problems and actually come out pretty gosh darn much stronger on the other side have a great day